Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan, and welcome to Central Park. It's been another crazy year, and of course, another year filled with plenty of interpretation programs from us here at the Interpretation and Programs Department here at the Central Park Conservancy. We're so happy to continue educating you in the park and virtually, such as on these weekly walks, a series that began back around 2020 has been continuing ever since. Over the couple of years, we've had, of course, a lot of fun adventures in the park, and we've taken you through a wide array of different landscapes and themes to explore. And we're, of course, going to be continuing that in the new year. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of our program today. But as a special thank you for the many years of support, we want to highlight some of our favorite moments here in Central Park over the year of 2023. So thank you for joining us today on a weekly walk titled Year in Review, a tradition we started a few years ago and have been continuing ever since. On today's walk, we are going to be sharing some highlights from all five of the guides here at the Central Park Conservancy. Although we'll be sharing a little bit of everybody's highlights, you are going to physically, or should I say virtually, only be joined by Juan and myself today. But we're going to be sharing some of our favorite highlights of our guides, Carla, uh, Jose and Desiree, who unfortunately couldn't make it here for the performance, but have presented some great highlights and shared some words that we'll be giving uh, to you. So thank you for joining us again on today, December 27, 2023, as we highlight this past year. As a continued thank you um, to all of you who join us on these weekly walks, we want to thank you for supporting our mission, preserving and celebrating Central Park as a sanctuary from the pace and pressures of city life, enhancing the enjoyment and well-being of all. As we explore Central Park today, we're not going to be again taking a physical walk, but we do encourage you to say hello on the chat. Maybe let us know if you have any questions about these past weekly walks. And of course, vote in some of the visitor polls we'll launch. I'll just launch an initial poll right now to get us started. This is a pretty simple one. As I mentioned, we've been doing these weekly walks for about three years now, so we have done quite a few. Uh, I'd love to know what weekly walk this is for you. How seasoned of a weekly walk adventurer are you? Maybe this is your first walk, but I doubt it. Maybe you've been on all of our walks, and we'll talk a little bit about how many walks we've taken over the past few years. As we explore the park, though, let's start off by sharing some of Desiree's 2023 highlights. Now, Desiree, being um, newer to the Conservancy and a native New Yorker, she really, really enjoyed getting to explore the park in a little bit more detail and discovering parts of the park that she maybe wasn't familiar with as a local New Yorker. Um, on her exploration through the park, she really enjoyed being able to explore and learn about the park in a new lens and really getting to explore it in different contexts. We can see a lot of different themes she was able to explore, really engaging with the community. Being a local Harlem resident, uh, she certainly did a lot of fun programs like playground partner events and ones that engage a lot of families that are living nearby the park. Uh, we certainly see Desiree taking kindly to children, and I think a lot of the programs and the highlights from her weekly walks certainly cater to the child and all of us. As we explore the park, let's look at some of Desiree's highlights from 2023. Now, certainly, Desiree got to explore a lot more with birding this year, and she got to kind of play a bird photographer at times. Uh, in the birding weekly walk, we do see a uh, specifically titled birding season. We do see Desiree becoming a lot more comfortable with the idea of calling herself a birder, being able to lead people on journeys throughout the park and having the pleasure of inspiring others to maybe take up this activity of birding. Something that at times seems maybe inaccessible to some of us, but as we've learned, it's really easy to achieve here in Central Park, especially using some of the resources that we can find at visitor centers like free binoculars. Here we can see a photo of a male cardinal that Desiree was really proud to see. Being able to spot these becomes a lot easier as you start adventuring around the park. And of course, Desiree captured a lot more than just birds. Um, from this point of view, Desiree got to educate people on Japanese culture for the, ja uh, for the J Japan Day Parade weekly walk. Uh, she even got to actually march in this parade, which occurred um, which occurred this, of course, this past year. Uh, she did show this photo, though, from the 2022 Japanese Day, uh, Japan Day Parade. Um, that actually marked the 150th anniversary in 2022 um, of the visit of the Japanese mission led by the ambassador, the extraordinary, uh, I'm apologizing for the pronunciation, for the pronunciation here, Awakura Tamani in 1872. 
it actually resulted in much better relations between Japan and the U.S. and would actually help to start establish this parade, which become a more regular tradition. We also, of course, see Desiree getting to uh, embrace some of her personal hobbies. Uh, first personal hobby of hers is certainly Japanese street fashion, and I'm sure, I'm sure we've all loved some of the colorful and wonderful style she's brought to these weekly walks. Of course, switching it up from some of my more typical bland style. Uh, but we do see some photos here that were part of Desiree's encounter during the Japan Day Parade. Uh, we can actually see some of her and her friends pictured over here in the left corner. Um, very fun uh, day that made a lot of people smile. And she got to educate people a little bit more on J fashion, which is an alternative style of Japanese fashion that you can see in Harajuku, which is the capital of Kauai fashion. Kauai means cute. And um, of course, we can see a lot of cute uh, imagery and cute designs in these photos here. Um, what do you do when you see people like this um, getting a compliment and getting attention is to respectfully ask for a photo rather than snapping a photo. Desiree always wants to remind us of the positive and more polite ways to engage the things that might be a little unfamiliar to us. As we continue on, of course, Desiree got to extend a lot of playground walks and talks, both in-person walks, but also exploring them on some of the virtual programs. We have 21 playgrounds here in Central Park, and here you'll see the ancient playground located near the Metropolitan Museum of Art. A lot of the style within this playground features architecture that mirrors some of the Egyptian wing, which is located very close by and actually partly visible in this photo. Uh, certainly can see a small little obelisk nearby this location, as well as a very large obelisk that is located just behind the Metropolitan. As we continue exploring, Desiree certainly also was able to talk a lot about community, one of the major themes we see occurring in, in uh, her walks throughout the year, both in person and virtual. Dancing the Summer Away was a weekly walk that took place, of course, in the summer and featured some of the incredible cultural dancers here in the park, like the dance skaters, even swings, yeah, swing dancers, as well as Lindy Land, a group that meets up every Sunday in the summer at the King Jagaewo Plaza, which we can see pictured here. Certainly a lot of fun, no matter what area of the park you're in. And Desiree uh, also got to talk a lot about fall foliage, something we always love to talk about. It's something that brings a lot of people to the park in the fall. Fall foliage views like this one here at the lake on the lake views of the west side weekly walk were some of her favorites. And I think I can tell why from that beautiful rainbow we see in the middle center over here. We learned a lot about foliage during this time of the year. And of course, why it's so fun to visit the park during the October season, one of the busiest months you'll find here. However, um, of course, a lot of beauty can be found in all seasons. And of course, this was Desiree's favorite because of that beautiful rainbow we see pictured here. Let's take one last look at that little rainbow over here. Um, a little B-side from one of Desiree's weekly walks that she wanted to include here. Uh, another difficult part is really choosing all the photos. We take so many, sometimes over 200 on our weekly walks, and uh, we only get to show about maybe 50 or so of them. So it can be really difficult to choose uh, which ones you want to share. But Desiree had a great time uh, really being able to share some of her passions. And I think that's something that we all really appreciate, being able to live out our joys of the park, but also some of our personal life that we can bring into it and educate people on. Now, as we make our way on, we're going to be coming to Jose's highlights. I'll be pre presenting Jose's highlights as well, and then I'll give you a break and introduce Juan to present his and Carla's. But for now, we can take a moment to shout out Jose. Uh, he is currently on an Amtrak train to Vermont uh, for the weekend, but he does send his warmest regards and hopes to everyone, uh, hoping that you're all enjoying the holiday season. He wanted to share with you some of his favorite moments from this past 2023 year. Now, back in February, Jose hosted a walk along the northern perimeter to explore Duke Ellington's influence on Central Park, as well as the greater Harlem community. And for over a century, jazz has been an important part of New York City culture. And Jose wanted to delighted to, was delighted to talk to you about one of his favorite music genres. Pictured here is trumpeter Takaya Kuroda at the Harlem Mirror Performance Festival, one of our favorite musical traditions to occur in the northern end of the park. We can see in May, Jose getting a chance to explore the South End, taking us from North to South, to get a glimpse of Central Park's Civil War history. 
Now, Jose is a major history buff, if you couldn't tell from some of his weekly walks. So just being able to show the people some of his favorite historical sites in Central Park was a delightful experience for him. On this walk, we also got to learn more about the political atmosphere of mid 19th century New York City. And we also got to see this gold plated statue of William Tecumseh Sherman at Grand Army Plaza. Of course, one of the many grand statues we get to see when we come into Central Park. Now, we also got the chance to take a look at some of the rustic architecture of the park. There are actually a few new rustic shelters that have been constructed in the Ramble. Um, looking at some of these benches, arbors, and fences that were built throughout the park in the mid-1800s had mostly been lost over time, but Jose was able to show us some historic photos and some of the existing ones that still, of course, exist here in Central Park, mostly found in the Ramble today, but uh, quite a few are decorated throughout Central Park. Uh, picture here is the summer house in the Ramble, one of the last remaining wood structures. Just this year, the Conservancy embarked on a project to restore a few of these elements, and you can find quite a few now within the Ramble. One cool fact I'll note about this is these original cedar beams are from the original construction of this back in the 19th century. The only original wood items that still remain in the park. Uh, in October, Jose led one of his favorite weekly walks of the past year. He presented on Central Park's native and indigenous history, focusing heavily on the footprint of Lenape on the modern park. And for this walk, we went around the Harlem Mere primarily, as well as the Northwoods, to get a better sense of the pre-park landscape. And as we learned from this walk, indigenous folks used to use the land that would become Central Park as a place to hunt and to fish for food. Of course, a lot of these great walks were able to also create into in-person tours. So if you ever have the opportunity to stop in the park throughout the year, you might be able to have Jose lead you on an indigenous central park tour. As we continue on for Jose's highlights, finally last month, Jose reintroduced us to a long forgotten holiday called Evacuation Day. It commemorated the British uh, military's retreat from New York City in 1783. It was celebrated with big feasts and parties, but these days it isn't very popular at all. For this walk, we went up to the north end and examined landmarks uh, like the cannon at Fort Clinton, which was once used aboard a Royal Naval warship called the HMS Bizarre. That ran into Hellgate or ran aground rather into Hellgate around 1780, eventually leading to this cannon being erected here in Central Park. A delightful surprise to many that visit the park's northern ends. All right, thank you, Jose, for those highlights. As we come to the end of Jose's section, I'm going to give you a break from all of me as we introduce Juan in. Um, just before we introduce Juan, I will just share the results of the polls, and it looks like we're joined by a lot of people who, of course, have been on quite a few of our weekly walks, with the majority coming on over 50 plus. Uh, I do see actually, wow, three people that this is their first weekly walk. Well, thank you for joining us on our first weekly walk, celebrating some of the highlights of this past 2023 season. Without any further ado, let's bring in Juan to uh, lead us through his highlights. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Juan, as Ryan and Chaluz. I am a guide with the Central Park Conservancy. I am uh, also very happy to be back with the Conservancy after about a year on leave. Today, we are, I'm going to I'll walk you through some of the interpretations that I helped put together uh, with the help of my colleagues and the professionals within our organization. I first uh, took you on a walk in June, introducing you to the colors of summer. We started our walk in the western section of the park, right across the street from the American Museum of Natural History, and immediately entered Naturalist Walk, a section where from the image that you have directly in front of you, makes you feel like you are directly in the countryside, right in the middle of the city. We proceeded into the park and we approached uh, the incredible Shakespeare Garden. Uh, already we've seen some images of the foliage that uh, pops up in Central Park at different seasons, different times of the year. In the summer, we have incredible varieties of colors, as we can see in these uh, beautiful blue violet uh, floss flowers and also these beautiful spider plants, which I encountered for the first time as I prepped this particular presentation. We continued on making our way towards the Belvedere Castle Terrace, and we spotted this uh, stunning quinceañera, 
organizing, taking photos and creating beautiful uh, memories, timeless memories. I love this photo because it offers this incredible contrast of a timeless memory and also the contrast of this female form over here that is just using the park as her backyard. And that was just a color of summer. We moved on further in the season and looked at the park through the lens of some very popular films that have been, that have used Central Park as its backdrop. Among them, we looked at the holiday classic Home Alone 2 with the beautiful Gapstow Bridge in the background, which is in the very vicinity of this landscape where we started on this particular walk in the southern section of the park. We carried along just north of Gapstow Bridge is the iconic woman rink and the movie reference that we used was of Serendipity, another holiday favorite. And here we see the, um, uh, we see the iconic woman rink and um, the skyline of Manhattan in the background. We continued north in this particular walk, looking at the park and some iconic landscapes and through this particular lens and learned about the process of filming in the park. Central Park is, yes, an incredibly iconic location and the process to film in the park today has evolved and is very organized, ensuring that everyone has uh, unique and, and the needed access that they expect from this incredible space. We then, uh, further along, a few weeks along, we explore the park through the lens of the contributions that volunteers bring into these 843 acres. The Central Park looks spectacular, looks spectacular for movies, uh, looks amazing throughout the seasons with the beautiful things that bloom. If it weren't for the engine, the volunteer volunteerism is in the park, this wouldn't be the case. And in this particular walk, we explored how, where can we encounter these, uh, uh, our volunteers uh, staffing the park and providing information and working on landscapes. We started off on 59th Street up on 6th Avenue where you can uh, see this uh, information kiosk on the particular days you might encounter volunteers like Mary who has been serving as a volunteer for the Conservancy for the last uh, 12 years. If you happen to be visiting local or first time visitor, be sure to stop by our information kiosk and uh, ask um, any information that you might need. Moving along, we also learn of how volunteers work even in the rain. This uh, season, this summer season, I remember a time where it felt like it was raining every weekend. I think we got like eight straight weekends of rain and this is a very active time for are hundreds upon hundreds of volunteers to engage and work in the park. This Saturday group engaged in weeding on their benches. Here we see them with their ponchos and lifting their legs, uh, showing off the work that they engaged in on this particular rainy day. On a more favorable day, uh, although it was incredibly warm, I remember the temperature here being north of 90 degrees Fahrenheit and very humid. I was walking along the western section of the park and encounter a group of volunteers working on the landscape, working on the land uh, proper. They were weeding uh, and prepping this particular space with wood chips. So to create um, a space where people can gather and also provide this beautiful contrast, as you can see here, that almost looks untouched. And this is really uh, a reflection of the powerful work that volunteers help uh, manifest in the park, helping organize for these incredible memories to be created in this incredible work of art in the middle of Manhattan. Moving along, we also explore that some of the art in the park. I first took you on a walk focusing on uh, some of the sculptures in the park and particularly the work of Paul Manship. Paul Manship's uh, Prometheus over at Rockefeller Center is highly celebrated this time of the year in Central Park. Uh, uh, you might be surprised to know there is a very special collection of works of art by Paul Manship, like the Osborne Gates, as you can see here at the entrance to the ancient playground, which uh, Ryan showed you in the slide um, presenting on the work that Desiree Hale helped carry out uh, earlier in the year. Uh, beautiful details on this gate. I particularly bring you this close up of uh, city miles and country miles. The theme of this particular gate are ancient fables uh, by a man named Aesop. And Aesop provided uh, stories that help 
um, help individuals evolve when it comes to moral character and some very basic and um, particular teachings that today we might be just incredibly familiar with because basically we grow up uh, with them. This is pretty much at our feet. You can see how um, how sandy it is. Uh, again, the, every little detail in Central Park uh, matters and provides uh, very powerful, rich experience, as is the case with uh, country miles and city miles, as we see here. We moved along along the eastern section of the park and spotted the iconic facade of the Metropolitan Museum with uh, beautiful posters depicting, uh, showing pastel colors. And this is in direct connection to the Manet and Degas exhibit that they have going on, which ends on January 7th. If any of you are in New York or visiting and want to check that out, definitely do. They have a, a, a wonderful, wonderful exhibit. In there, just south of the Metropolitan Museum, we saw another work by Paul Manchu. This one, uh, Three Bears, and at the entrance to another playground in the park. Uh, we proceeded along and just uh, south. Uh, along the eastern section of the park at, at another gate at an entrance to another space this time at this instance a zoo the children's zoo in central park has this uh, beautiful detail at, at the top this uh, bronze scroll depicting three figures dancing and uh, uh, a male figure at the center uh, with two stags that are also joining him uh, dancing along all art deco in style and again by the hand of Paul Manship. Now, moving along, we also explore the art of Frederick Roth. Frederick Roth was a New York based artist. He was born in New York, studied in Germany and came uh, back to the United States where he enjoyed a very prolific artistic career. And here we see his dancing goat in the vicinity of the previous work that I showed you by Paul Manship. This was installed in the 1930s. Uh, it's also accompanied by another work of art, by another animal sculpture of his called a honey bear. Honey bear and dancing goat flank both sides of the zoo in the part, the main uh, zoo space. Now, moving along, we also noticed and looked at his uh, sculpture of Balto. Balto has to be arguably one of the most iconic sculptures in the park and unique in the sense that he was uh, here for the unveiling of his monument in 1925. Uh, an incredible phenomenon, the story of Balto. His, his story unfolds in the February of 1925 and by December of that same year, his statue was dedicated in the park and here he is forever with us. Moving along just north of Balto, we spotted the sculpture of Mother Goose. Mother Goose uh, features a relief at uh, the bottom, uh, uh, just below the goose uh, figure, uh, depicting stories, uh, popular stories, like uh, Humpty Dumpty, Little Red Riding Hood, just um, a very evocative and the imaginative sculpture igniting the imagination of people who spot it and see it. Uh, just north of, uh, of the Mother Goose sculpture, north of Conservatory Water, we have um, one of the another of the 20 plus playgrounds that we have in the park and this particular playground is unique in the sense that at the very center has a beautiful fountain that depicts uh, figures from Alice in Wonderland. This is also by Frederick Roth and here we see a figure of Alice holding a penguin uh, which she is using as a mallet. Uh, the pink tone that you see, that you notice, is not an illusion. This is made of pink granite, which I was very surprised uh, to find. Now, this is how the sculpture, uh, the fountain looked before the Conservancy restored it in 1986 and placed it at the, the Levin playground where it is today and turned it into this uh, water feature that we see here that we see here today. This is, of course, in warm weather when this is activated in this manner. Now, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the slides that I shared with you from the walks that I presented. I look forward to presenting in the, the, in the months ahead, in the seasons ahead. And uh, now, let's direct our attention to the interpretations that Carla helped organize uh, for us in 2023. Carla, like Desiree, is fairly recent uh, to the Conservancy, has been with us for about a year. 
within that year has, um, has also uh, explored a lot in the park and learned a great deal as well and shared a lot of what she has experienced and learned with us all. And she again showed us, began showing us a beautiful colors in the, the springtime. This was back in March over at the conservatory garden where we learned about the woman who helped transform this section of the park in the 1980s, a woman named Lyndon Miller. This is where we spotted these, these beautiful crocuses, one of the earlier signs of spring. Um, further along in April, she took us to, uh, to the Shakespeare Garden when we were celebrating William Shakespeare's uh, birthday. Beautiful palette of colors over here, pinks, uh, whites, and uh, even some yellows as well. In later in the season, uh, she took us to see the actual sculpture of William Shakespeare that we have in the park uh, in September. And in this instance, we were examining what uh, Shakespeare was wearing. Carla let us know of details like uh, the clothes that uh, Shakespeare is wearing, which is uh, made of silk and velvet. And here we have an extra dimension adding or reflecting on the work that we do as these professionals that you see here on the screen are inspecting the sculpture, polishing it, and ensuring that it's in it's the best state that it can um, that it can possibly be. Later in the season, she also showed us, this was in October, she showed us and she took us to North Meadow area where we saw and learned about different types of trees and the seeds that they produce. Some of them quite amazing and stunning. I myself, as I'm uh, looking at these images, I'm quite more intrigued than will myself uh, revisit uh, some, of these, some of these walks. Beautiful, uh, clear days on some occasions, uh, but again, uh, don't be deceived. Uh, it was uh, quite warm in some, in some days and very humid in others, but overall, beautiful visual experience nonetheless all over the park. Now, one of the most imaginative walks that I um, that I myself witnessed was the one that Carla prepared just uh, last November, a couple of weeks ago. She uh, lost her phone in the park and when she finally found it, she learned that a squirrel had taken it into a photographic adventure into some of the, into some iconic spots in Central Park and here, we see in this image as the phone is resting and it gives us that very unique perspective uh, from this particular uh, animal in the park. Now, a lot uh, to explore, a lot to, uh, to reminisce over. I feel that I'm ready for the end of the year with this analysis, but I am excited to see what uh, Ryan has put together and uh, hopefully the information that we share with you inspires you to continue exploring with us and to continue your support of our organization. Thank you everyone. I will be on the back end. Happy holidays and very happy new year. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. So I'm here for the last little bit to give you my highlights for the year. So thank you again for joining us on this little highlights roll. Now, of course, a lot of highlights this past year, like every year weekly walks, it's really hard to pick the highlights. It's also hard to pick just the photos for the weekly walks themselves. But of course, I've had the pleasure of taking you through quite a weekly, quite a lot of weekly walks. And being able to cycle through the past few years, what I'd love to do is kind of continue to show you the park through this time capsule of photos that we've created over the past few years. So this past year, in February 22nd, on February 22nd, 2023, we did a sledding in Central Park weekly walk. Now, those who visited the park last winter know that it was one of the warmest winters recorded in weather recording history, as the first snowfall was a measly 0.3 inches or so on February 1st. That means the snow did not hang around long, and we didn't really get to see too much sledding action. But we were able to kind of highlight some of the looks at the past when sledding was more plentiful in the park. Uh, being with the Conservancy for about seven years and doing these weekly walks for about three years, been able to capture a lot of photos that serve as a time capsule and show us the park as it progresses. What you'll see here is a photo on the left 
from February 22nd, 2023, and a photo on the right from a weekly walk on February 2nd, 2022. It's incredible to see the changes in the park. This was again a photo from February of 2022 when we had a very nice winter season. Just the following year on February 22nd, 2023, this is what the park looked like during winter. It's pretty amazing and sometimes unfortunate to be able to capture these changes in the park and the changes in the seasons and weather we're experiencing. I think just in the past three years alone, we've noticed how much some of these seasons have cycled and changed, and we've experienced very, very warm winters. Uh, something that we don't really like to see because, of course, beyond sledding, it also disrupts a lot of environmental cycles for animals. But it hasn't all been so bad. We've, of course, had a lot of fun along the ways. Um, some of these weekly walks have been a bit of a joke. Literally, uh, this is a photo from an April Fool's weekly walk on April 5th, 2023, where we got to tell you about the animals or sheep returning to Sheep Meadow. Just kidding. They didn't really come back as this was a fun little altered image that was created by one of our uh, one of my colleagues, Jessica DeAngelis. Sharing these fun little kind of joke like weekly walks and slides were a great way to kind of, of course, break the tension of sometimes what was a difficult year, but of course, a lot of smiles, a lot of fun, and a lot of jokes to be had here in Central Park. Beyond the jokes, what I really love about these weekly walks is it allows me to better connect with the park. Beyond leading in-person tours, these weekly walks allow me to bring out the photographer and myself and take a little bit more time to really be mindful of the park surroundings and some of the beautiful scenes. Also allows me to sometimes maybe stop, sit down, get a different perspective, and just enjoy the park from maybe a visitor's perspective rather than somebody that works here. So getting to stop and maybe smell the flowers or the grass of Sheep Meadow was certainly a fun time for me. But it's also great to be able to highlight some of the historical accounts of New York City in the past. And one weekly walk I got to do was a little shout out for an in-person program we did called Constructing Central Park otherwise known as Who Built Central Park. This was a really fun one because it allowed us to show a little bit of New York's past, including one of the things that brought a lot of people here, construction of major projects like the Erie Canal, which helped to improve immigration, provide a lot of jobs, and maybe even, if you could say, helped to lead to the creation of features like Central Park. We can also learn a little bit about the park's natural history, which was a favorite part of that, talking about the over 20,000 laborers that excavated 2.5 cubic mil, uh, 2.5 million cubic yards of stone and earth. To give you an idea of how much that is, that is an American football field stretched to the height of the Empire State Building of Manhattan Chist and other bedrock type materials that were either brought out of or into Central Park. So being able to visualize these on weekly walks is really fun because of course in the park, it's a little bit harder. Beyond that though, we've learned about how all of the hard work of over 20,000 laborers, predominantly a lot of Irish and German immigrants, as well as some Italian immigrants, really helped to lay out this heavily manipulated but very beautiful park. Of course, on that walk, we also got to highlight not only the past, but the present. We got to shout out the Conservancy staff, who of course today are the main caretakers of the park, along with the countless volunteers and supporters. Uh, without the help of volunteers, the staff, and of course members who help to support our mission, we really couldn't keep this park looking so clean, green, and beautiful. So a big shout out to all them. Shout out to Desiree. As we uh, come through towards the end of my highlight section, there is uh, a favorite kind of general highlight of mine, which was really getting to teach you a lot about the music's history in, part, in the park, but also the live musical performances that regularly occur. I led two music-related walks throughout this summer month, these summer months that were uh, more related to an in-person tour I put together, Music in Central Park. Uh, one of those was Making Waves, which is a photo we can see here from August 9th, 2023. Beyond that, I also got to explore the history of the Central Park summer stage. Uh, that walk occurred on June 7th, 2023. And what I loved about these, like Desiree mentioned before, we got to incorporate some of our personal interests into a lot of these walks, getting to show some photos that I've taken from concerts at summer stage, including this one, a group from, uh, I believe from Denmark called Ice Age. It's really cool to see some of the international musical acts that come into the park and play for free at the Central Park Summer Stage. 
Beyond that, we saw some local acts like Horse Girl, who also played this summer over at the summer stage. So getting to incorporate some of my maybe awkward photos into these presentations was also always a fun part. Art. Beyond that, one of my favorite personal things to learn about on this Music Weekly Walk was to learn how they better adjust the sound for the many, many residents that live around the park. And learning about that KSL audio system that was put in, we learned how they take into account the park's topography, foliage, and other physical setups in the landscape to really create a better sound map, putting sound where it needs to be rather than just playing sound really loud and noisy. It makes but a lot more comfortable for those that might live out on Fifth Avenue. And it makes it a lot more interesting, in my opinion, to those that might be in the venue, like myself, learning why it sounds so good over here, but doesn't spill out and annoy the people outside the park. Of course, I really appreciate everybody joining us on these weekly walks this year. And I really love being able to, again, explore the park from a visitor perspective. We are so excited to, again, continue these weekly walks, and we're going to give you a little bit more information about how they're going to be continuing. Again, weekly walks, as well as virtual tours, will still be available. So to explain how to continue seeing the weekly walks in these uh, this upcoming year, I'm going to bring on my colleague, Juliana. Hi, folks. Uh, I'm Juliana. I work in membership. Some of you probably already know me. So as Ryan and Juan have been alluding to, um, I know you're all aware that weekly walks um, have essentially ended, but we wanted to make sure that you all know that members have their own version of weekly walks, and these are called Secrets of Central Park. So we encourage you all to join as members so you can participate in Secrets of Central Park. And I will say I know um, some of the upcoming topics of Secrets of Central Park, and it's going to be really cool. One of them is about like the weather recording station in Central Park. One of them is only about glacial erratics, going to go in depth on the glacial erratics in the park. So you're going to learn a lot if you join. Um, the series is weekly, just like the weekly walks. It's led by our guides, who you already know, and it's open to all members. So I'm just going to briefly take you uh, on a journey to see how to become a member. So the easiest way to become a member of the Conservancy is right on our homepage. Um, and we're going to list that link in the chat. So once you're on the website, as you can see in the top right corner, you'll see a red button that says Join Renew. If you click on that red button, it'll take you to our online form, which allows you to choose your membership level and um, fill out your payment information. So that direct link is going to be in the chat as well. Okay, so at the Gardner level of membership, which is our entry point, that's a $50 donation and it's completely tax deductible. Members get access to all virtual programs, including our members only weekly series. Uh, members also get all sorts of other benefits at the Gardner level and at higher levels. Um, and you can see that if you click on each membership level on our website. So right on our website, you could join, as I said earlier, and also if you don't want to donate through our website, you could also mail us a check. Um, our information is right on that slide, and we could also take your information over the phone. We also take donations from donor advice funds, we take gifts of stock, we take qualified charitable dis distributions from RMDs, we take almost everything. <laughs> So if you have any questions about membership, um, we're happy to chat with you. We're a friendly bunch. Um, so please give us a call. Or you can also email us. We're here every day, Monday through Friday. So we hope to hear from you and we hope that you join us. I think I'm giving it back to Ryan. So as we come to the end of our highlights here in 2023, I want to once again thank you for all of the fun you've made this. Uh, hello, Desiree. Thanks for joining us at the end here to again celebrate this past year weekly walks. As a reminder, you can go on our YouTube channel and you can find uh, a lot of weekly walks which we, which we launched uh, just as we come to the very end. Let's launch one last little poll for those that still remain in here. Uh, it'll be a simple one. That poll will be, how many weekly walks do you think we've done? Uh, this number is going off of our YouTube channel to see how many we have posted on there. 
So again, we have a lot of weekly walks available. I mentioned before, I think the highest number I put on there was 150. And we have a lot of people that have been here for over 100 walks, which is really incredible to think about. Um, so I see a lot of people voting in this and I'm gonna end it in just a few moments. So get your last votes in. But as I let you vote in there again, Thank you for joining us and making this past year very special. Of course, plenty of programs to continue going on through the Secrets of Central Park series and plenty of in-person tours as well. Being a member, you also get discounts on in-person tours and we have dozens of them to provide. So certainly sign up for those because we'd love to chat with you in person rather than at a screen. As I end that last poll, I see just about everybody answered, and we have a majority of the people getting the correct answer. There are currently 181 weekly walk presentations on our YouTube channel. So be sure to check out some of those and relive the past few years or the past year with us. And of course, join us for this new year in Secrets of Central Park. Thank you, everybody. We'll keep the chat open for a little bit longer for those that want to say goodbye or ask any last minute questions. But for all of us here at the Central Park Conservancy, Stay safe, be well, and have a very happy new year. Bye, happy new year, everyone.